Hello and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to digital agency owner directors and learn about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather known sooner, we're here to hear all of the successes they've had along the way and where they've learned some lessons. All will be revealed. I'm your host, Chris Samantz, the agency coach, and I'll be talking to a different awesome person each episode, asking them four key questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, This is the first episode here, and I am lucky to have uh, Ross Tavendale, MD of Type A Media. Um, Hi, Ross. Hello, Chris. Thank you very much for inviting me on your first ever podcast um i hope there's a lot of firsts in here that won't be topped by by other guests well the good thing is with the first one less people will listen to it so i thought i'd just get get an easy easy guy in first you see oh not not with this twitter account (laughs) mate i've got at least 10 people that follow me you know (laughs) (laughs) just one retweet and it will go viral i guess that's it (laughs) and tell your server maintenance people to stand by yeah i'm a bit worried about that maybe i'll send them an email (laughs) after this (laughs) Um, so uh, firstly this is the bit that you get uh, the value out of I suspect so give us a bit of a plug who is Ross what is type A and what does it do when did you start all of those things that that make anyone listening maybe want to work with you Ross is a Gaelic Celtic name (laughs) (laughs) let's 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 start a little bit closer to home (laughs) a little bit further up the road okay Uh, Type E Media is a SEO agency that specialises in digital PR in particular we're very good at data journalism so making fancy interactive things that that tell stories with data so thingers Thingers, the wonderful, the enigmatic Jonah Alderson called it a thinger, which is the most reductive thing that I think I've ever heard in my life for what we do. But yeah, we make these thingers that get people links, ultimately. So cool interactive stuff that people will feature, which is pretty cool. How long have you been going for? Four years. Um, it's four long a- years or four quick years? I mean, well, the last two have been very long just because of all the kind of lockdowns and stuff, but the first two have went very quick. It's been a bit of a kind of mottled history, which I'm happy to to get into. It wasn't always kind of sunshine and and rainbows, but I I didn't do an MBA at university, so I just say that that's my real life MBA that I got. Exactly. It's it's probably the most expensive MBA anyone can have is running their own business. I I pretty much say that to to all of my agency clients because quite often you set up an agency when you're an expert at something and you learn the business bit along the way. Um, so let's get into the the questions. I've got four questions here which I'm going to ask every agency owner director um, in every episode, mm-hmm. and uh, a fifth one if we've got time and if I've not beaten you into submission by that point in time. Um, so uh, plug your ear holes back, listeners. Um, we've got uh, four great questions coming to Ross and the first one Ross is what do you feel has been one of your biggest successes over the last four years of running type A I think just survival like being <laughs> like a cop I mean we are just coming out of a pandemic so hopefully you, <laughs> you're talking about the business survival or personal survival yeah a little bit of both I mean so like survival I always think of like uh my business like a cockroach like there's been a couple of nuclear blasts but still <laughs> but we're still going you know um survival in a couple in a couple of ways i mean when we first actually started type a, it was birthed off the back of a company called ideas made that i bought into in inverted commas it was which sounds very grand but um it was either put a deposit on a mortgage in scotland which is you know 10 pence or um buy into this company in London, that's what I did. Was there for about two years, but then um, I fell out with the director and they put me through something called forfeiture, um, which kind of struck me off as a director with them. So that wasn't too fun. And out of the ashes of that came Type A. And um, we've just been going ever since really, but survival, I think is the the, the big one. Like I'm, I'm, I'm proudest of is just dealing with a lot of punches to the mouth. Yeah, I think um, I think running a running an agency is often quite a lot of uh, personal 
um, battles, um, both both from a personal professional and from a um, at home professional perspective uh, perspective as well. You um uh, you you do have to take a lot of knocks along the way. Um, so so the biggest success being survival. What would you put some of that survival down to, other than just surviving? I mean, I've got like the nice Disney answer, and I've got the real answer. I'll give you. Give us the answer. Disney one first. Dis- Disney one first. We we do good news, bad news here. All right. So it would be the resilience and loyalty of my uh, team and their ability to deal with difficult situations and see things through, and the resoluteness of our clients trusting that we would get them into a good place regardless of what was happening in the world. Very Disney. Uh, and the realistic one? Cash in bank. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, often they say cash is king, I guess. Um, but it is, it's true. Cash flow, cash flow keeps things going. Yeah, um, I mean, just having... So I was always ultra conservative. Um, so having like a good cash runway... Like a lot of people say three months. We typically hold a little bit more uh, than that. Um, and that allowed us to like have a big cushion during the pandemic. It meant that when we need to hire people, we can do so like preemptively instead of reactively, which is something that is a new thing for type A, certainly when we were first starting out you just you know you, you couldn't just have a bunch of people on payroll just for the sake of it um but now we kind of can which is nice but That's um good. yeah i think that like cash runway is so important and also just being like incredibly paranoid that something bad is going to happen those first couple of years i was sitting on every single client call so from monday to wednesday i would just have calls from 10 till 6 back to back with all clients and that just allowed me to keep this iron grip on the quality of work going out however that's just a, one of uh, my ex-employees actually um it said to me as they were leaving to go to another agency in their exit interview they said um it's kind of just like working for like a really good freelancer and we're in the background i'm like oh mm. hey that was a real good like that that really sparked something in me to, to change things yeah it's it's um it's a it's a struggle that a lot of agency owner directors have actually because like i said in the in the opening um you often start your agency because you're technically great at what you do and you're able to to sell yourself really well the hardest part is is trying to sort of learn how to delegate properly and delegating isn't just giving people work to do it is performance management and things like that which is often harder the um the 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 hard bit around that is letting go and it's it's your baby you've you've crafted the services you crafted the uh, all of the documentation you've brought the client in you also feel a bit scared potentially about losing the client if they if you lose the connection with them potentially i remember when i was running um optus uh, a few years ago um i used to um find it really hard to not see things done exactly how i wanted to so i'm, I'm guessing that's a similar type of thing that you're that you're talking about it certainly was and if I think back to some of my early employees and some of the stuff that the hoops I used to get them to jump through I just think god they must have had the patience of absolute saints I think with a lot of startups not just agencies that you're really at the mercy of whatever the kind of neuroses of the owner is at mm. the start um, and mm. we actually see it with some clients like for small clients where you're talking to the owner wow very emotional and all the little built up traumas they've got over their yeah. life really comes out in the style of how how they're a leader and, and how they run their business um but i think the the biggie for me is that i'm really into logic there's a great website called thou shalt not commit logical fallacies dot com oh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> like it's just a big list of all the logical fallacies and if i think about you know okay so you think you've got big brains mr tavendale you go and hire this person to do a job and then you train them and then you don't let them do the job. I actually used to get people to deliverables, seeing they weren't quite right and then redo them in secret without telling them. Like how thoroughly mental is that? It's exhausting. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You've just got to think, well, if you're so smart and you're hiring these people, like what's going on? Yeah. Um, And that's really, there's an inner game there where you just need to let go and trust. Um, I think the reason why people don't let go is not that they don't trust the other person 
that they've hired is they don't trust their own training and leadership yet and that's where you get that neurotic stuff from it's never about yeah. the person it's always the individual absolutely i mean leadership is a, a, a skill in of itself um it's it's a it's very hard to to be naturally good at leadership it's also very hard to 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 um push yourself into a leadership role uh, when you've started out for yourself and you've kind of built it all for yourself, it's very hard to do that. Um, and oftentimes, uh, you've you, you spend an awful lot of time putting these things together, and the last thing you want to see is it come crumbling down around you because someone wasn't quite up to it, or you didn't spend the time delegating it properly. It's always on you if it goes wrong. So I guess the second question, which neatly sort of ties into this, if, if you were to go back, say, four years and talk to the younger, more sprightly, potentially slimmer Ross um, version, yeah, of, slimmer. <laughs> version of you, what would you what would you tell him? What would you say? Well, I would tell him that one day you're going to buy a chest size 46 blazer, which, <laughs> <laughs> which I did not ever expect would happen. Um, what would I tell him? Um, I think I would probably, this is a bit personal, I'd probably tell them to go to therapy earlier, um, okay. figure that stuff out, because I think a lot of the problems that you end up having as a leader is just all your own shit manifests into a company, because a company, we never say our company's like a family, I think that's like very toxic, bad stuff, but at the mm. start, that's what we actually said, it's like, we're like a family, but when I look back at it, it's like, we're not, we pay these people to come and work here, like that's really bad. Yeah. You pay people to come over there and then you have an argument over dinner. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, but the the thing I would say is, at the start, I was listening to tons of, like, Gary V and Tony Robbins, all these guys, mm-hmm. and one of the things Gary V kept going on about was, like, oh, just reinvest into the company and grow and grow and grow. I think that was actually terrible um, advice for me because... If you're in a position where you're re- Gary Vee already had several million pounds of cash in his back pocket, sure, yeah. do Whatever that. happens, he's okay, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, my net worth coming out of the last agency I was with was whatever I was paid that last month. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, hard zero. Yeah. So, um, you're just in this kind of weird place where you don't have any personal security and neither does your business. And then you're thinking about adding more liability through hiring just because your ego is telling you it's a good thing to do. Um, so what I would have said to the more splite, sprightly Ross is um, put some money away first and build your own personal runway and get your finances in order before you start being Billy Big Balls with you know hiring people. Okay, well that's, that's reasonable. I wonder whether Ross back four years ago would have listened to that. What do you think? No, I mean, I was, I'm was. i still very impressionable, but one of the things I would also tell my younger self is just don't listen to anyone's advice because it's so choice and it's mm. so related to their own little weird, like, world. So I guess, um, I, I guess with, like, uh, quantum tunneling or something, we could send this podcast back to you. I just wouldn't listen. I wouldn't even listen to myself. I, I don't. My younger. I don't know my younger self anymore. My younger self would not recognise who I am today. Um, so it'd be an interesting little thought experiment. But yeah. So, okay. so I, I guess other than other than uh, seeking advice slash therapy or listening to yourself a little bit, um, is there anything that you kind of regret? I guess or wish you'd done differently, or maybe even just sooner. Than you've done uh, previously yeah i think um not recording things and building like compounding assets into the business i was mm. running so what i mean by that is i would start these little shows or these little you know things for marketing but i mean technically i've been at it now for coming up for eight years really as like a freelancer and then a regional agency then type a but I don't really have a ton to show for it in terms of compounded mm. value. Could you imagine if I was writing blog posts and landing pages eight years ago and putting that on a site and reviewing things and getting into the industry more, like that compound value over eight years would be mm. huge. Um, so that's what I would say. I didn't really invest in building assets into the business. I was very concerned with sales. I was great at sales and that was actually one of my downfalls year one of being a freelancer i would lose 30 percent of my entire business every year so i'd mm. sell so much 
that I could barely do the work, barely go on calls. And of course, clients would be like, what are you doing, you little dickhead? I'm not giving you money for, for this. And then they'd fire me. Um, so I always had the sales thing nailed, just the service and the client happiness thing on year one. God, I must have been, what, 25 or something? Clueless. Fair enough, fair enough. And I guess, I guess, um, you have to learn some lessons the hard way that that's 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 reasonable i think but if you if you consider what you can what you can build as compounding assets as an agency owner now rather than just the marketing i think that i mean we've had conversations in the past where you you spend you personally spend a lot of time writing your standard operating procedures and and building things that are templatable that are not necessarily the the things that get delivered to clients but from a operations perspective um that sort of thing is is uh, essential to a to a growing agency, um, right? So, yeah. when when I work with lots of clients, uh, they they oh yeah we've got all the systems we've got the processes we don't need to worry about that bit. And then you look at it and the process is a word document with some bullet points or the the systems that they use are um, a, a very heavily overburdened overladen version of Asana. And I think you used to use Asana. I remember we had that conversation in the past and um, and, and and as did I with Optus and it becomes very messy very quickly and it's very easy to to undo things by mistake or um, change due dates without you know without making things um, uh, transactionable or or even transparent um, and lots of agencies build their business off the back of what they think is something because they've read a blog or they followed a book somewhere and 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 not having things that you can sort of compound over time that are assets inside the business is 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 usually a lost opportunity people come in people leave and you lose that that uh, uh, that knowledge over time and you can't expect the new person to come in and be able to immediately learn all the stuff that's in someone's head um, and I think you know not just from a marketing point of view but from a uh, an actual operations and growth point of view it costs more to, to have to keep going backwards and forwards doesn't it yeah the, the when it comes to like compounding assets in a business I always used to think of it as an external thing so compounding traffic which is a very SEO thing to think it really is. actually in, yeah, but internally, actually, that works as well. And I've been through that of like our operating procedures were so vast they, they were they became it's a weird thing. It's like you want to tell people like how to do the job, but also too much of that will kill their creativity, and it just becomes cumbersome and hard to to use. Mm. So one of the kind of great things that we've been able to do is exactly that we break our operating procedures down into questions so when because you need to think of like how it's being interacted with and how it's being searched for yeah because typically those operating procedures yes when you first onboard a junior they will probably go through it in a linear fashion but after that they've not you know put all of that in their head they need to go back and query what you've just built so you know if we're doing a document on keyword research that needs 30 40 different q a style videos so they can type yeah, yeah. that question and get the right thing so just little things like that um make quite a big um a big difference and and you you, you almost need uh, a full-time person to be able to keep on top of that from a revisions perspective um not just making the the uh, revisions themselves but also just keeping on top of the the process for for keeping on top of the things you need to keep on top of um i mean, i I've, I've found that quite a lot of the agencies that i work with over time they often end up hiring uh, um, uh, someone whose direct role is is operational um, uh, efficiency stuff, so project management, but at the business level as opposed to um, the individual project level. Um, and I think that quite often the amount of things you just talked about there, that's not enough. That's too much for one person to keep in their head, especially as the agency owner with all the other stuff going on. If you've got a, a person who's who's typically brilliant at operational procedures and, and 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 project management then then you then you end up help having that person help you along the way hey ross don't forget next week we need to re-record the section two of the keyword research document because this tool has changed or something like that yeah internally having a process to change process and that sounds oh really yeah yeah like worries, but it's quite important and then typically heads of department would be in charge of mm -hmm. making sure that's all up to date um, yeah so I agreed. Um, I think that 
um, having having the right people accountable for things is is essential, but also being able to keep on top of the people who are accountable for things. It's a never ending cycle, and no wonder nothing ever gets done, eh? Um, <laughs> so, what would you say then um, if? If someone is thinking right now, they're listening to this and they've heard all these things about going to therapy and have some cash in the bank and um, uh, and get your get your uh, assets and things all sorted out. If someone was thinking, I'm looking to start my own agency, I'm going to leave in-house or I'm going to leave the agency I'm working in, start out for myself and build my own agency. What would you say is like the the one sort of core piece of advice you'd say to them on uh, just first thing that they do if they're going to start out for themselves? I would ask them why they're doing it. Um, I get that it kind of looks quite like fancy and there's a little bit of kind of prestige that goes with it and all the rest of it. But truly ask yourself why. If the answer is money, then an agency is not a good vehicle for you at the start, especially in today's market. Just being a day rated freelancer, Mm -hmm. oh my God, like you you could do incredibly well. Just to put it in perspective, like if an agency turns over a million pounds, if they're amazing, what what would that be like a 30 percent net would be yeah. phenomenal groundbreaking that, work that that would be extraordinary right if so they had like, if they had full-time staff as well for sure yeah so like if you're a publicist group agency um to be bought you need a net of over 14 percent. so just let that sink in to make 140 grand you actually need to turn over a million quid now to make 140 grand as a freelancer is still hard but like making a million quid is really difficult yeah so um i would say just ask yourself why if it's money think about the freelance route first mm-hmm. if it's not money and you've got like really good ideas that you want to you want to make something you want to put together these processes you want to build teams and all that sort of thing and you want to you can't really work with big brands and make a lot of impact as an individual unless you're a high level consultant which for seos that doesn't really exist in our, our world a lot of the time um so if you were starting out now i would make sure that you get your numbers right at the start realize that an agency is a formula business and what i mean by that is you know it's been done a million times over and there is a formula to running these sorts of companies it's not some you know ingenious software startup where you need to be super creative like with your clients no work you need to be creative but with the business operations it's a formula yeah. so that's what i would say to them yeah um, i often um call what you you call a formula business a recipe in the sense that it's the same cake everyone's trying to make but you might add a pinch of this and a, and a little bit of that and make it your own but ultimately you still have to bake it at 140 degrees for 20 minutes and you still have to mix things and you still have to use the same base ingredients um, that's why there's so many different agencies out there and hence the name of the uh, the podcast because almost every agency says results driven so on and so forth and we have an office dog the chief morale officer and things that's just because they're all baking the same cake um, there are ways to be unique and your own um, but that's where you add a little pinch of something to, to add the flavor and that's where you add your um, uh, your specific skill set into into creating these assets like you do for example um, the 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 thingers as we call them in jest are pretty bloody good and that's that's because you've done something that other agencies can do but you do it in a different way and that's why it has the success that it does i think yeah getting a usp is very important and i would definitely niche down and, and be very don't be the everyman especially mm. when you start out pick your niche and really uh, kind of go after it one thing yeah. i would also say is when you're thinking about usps or you're thinking about copy for your website it's very hard to be original and one of the things that i quite like to do with other competing agencies is read their mission statements and what they stand for and stuff and reverse it so if they say you know we um we exist to give our clients good results okay well if we reverse that and say we exist yeah. to give our clients ship results that doesn't make any sense so if, you, if it if it doesn't make if it doesn't make sense in reverse don't say it because the words that you've just absolutely. said are implicit and you don't need to yeah them. yeah absolutely same same thing goes for for values same thing goes for for um for purpose and uh and, and in and in all senses of the word if you want to try and be you can be the everyman agency if you want and you could do all right with that but you still come up against the same problems and then it becomes a, a marketing and sales problem um the it's hard to get margin out of those businesses. oh yeah absolutely oh, like when we started out facebook ads were really popping off we're like yeah let's do facebook ads as well 
and you need a creative, you need someone to work the ads, you need a copywriter, mm-hmm. and you need an account manager to like it's it's loads to get one set of ads out. Absolutely. Um yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. And uh, and you know, for all the hard work, for all of the effort that you put in, and for all the time you put in, would you would you say that 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 you 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 would do it all over again? Would would if you went back time back in time four years, knowing everything you know now, and uh, the opportunity of uh, one path or the, or this path were in front of you, would you would you pick it? Yeah, but I think I'd maybe change the ferocity that I kind of went at it. So. Mm-hmm because you, you're, you're going to get tired um, and then all these great plans don't always come 100% to yeah. fruition. So what I would actually say is just take it like that uh, Bukowski thing. If you're going to go go all the way, um, I would take it to the absolute nth degree and don't be scared about taking it to the nth degree. When you don't see anyone else doing it, you get scared. Yeah. The one thing you do is you're like, oh, no one else does it like this. This is a bit weird. The four day work week thing that we do, like that's a bit weird. And that was scary to do that. But if you do it enough scary things, you actually become emboldened. Like there's a thing in World War Two where people in the Blitz, um, they would, you know, come out of the bomb shelters and see their next door neighbor's house had been flattened by a, a Nazi bomb. But they would actually feel more emboldened and emblazoned by it because of the near miss. They're like, ha, can't get me, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. And the more you do those things that make you feel brave, it can that compounds. Mm. So I would be focused on that as well, I think. Yeah. And I, and I think if, you know, if, if uh, for anyone who's listening who runs an agency now or um, is looking to run an agency in the future, I think one thing. It, on the the point that you're making there, Ross, is um, don't bother with being uh, on Twitter or ignore people who are trolls on Twitter because if you try doing something differently and you want to be brave and you want to go for it and you want to go to the nth degree, there's going to be someone who doesn't like it and that's that's for them to worry about. Um, there's there's plenty of good to come uh, from from trying hard and trying to do different things. You know, when you did the four day work week almost no other agencies were doing that sort of thing if at all um it was scary because obviously you've had to operationally plan around that but it could have easily backfired and 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 you 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 stuck with it and you 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 did what you needed to do um there are some agencies out there that try different models there's some agencies out there that try really hard to be big and bold and and loud and um it's for other people to to have their own opinion uh, around that sort of thing i think so yeah keep Absolutely. keep your keep yourself strong to the thing that you that you try to do and on, only change it when you've got something that shows that it wasn't the right way to do it yeah keep it elegant one of the things that we um so we've got these kind of values and one of them is uh do not manage outputs fix the inputs and that means think about what you're doing in the strategy before you implement mm. and if you've got you know, a bunch of stuff that feels messy or hard to manage, we don't need to throw more management at it. We just need to fix the problem that's creating the mess. Yeah. Um, that's another one that we yeah. can pick by. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Russ, for, for joining me on the inaugural And We Have an Office Dog podcast. Um, it's uh, It's been great, actually, having this conversation. So hopefully uh, anyone listening enjoys it and shares it. Um, if they don't and no one listens then that Twitter following you were talking about is a load of rubbish Ross <laughs> uh, um, but uh, thanks for listening everybody and uh, the next episode soon uh, to follow uh, with another fabulous agency owner so thanks very much Ross thanks Chris have a good day